Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2.30 p.m. session in the Business and Enterprise track. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org and tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC with the, ha with the hashtag OSCC14! This hour, we are happy to introduce a terrific speaker on the Kitely Market, the Metaverse Marketplace, one year later. Our speaker is Ilan Tochner. He is the co-founder and CEO of Kitely, the biggest commercial provider of OpenSim regions and the creator of Kitely Market, the leading marketplace serving the hypergrid Metaverse. Ilan formerly, formerly held key positions in several startups, including CEO at ID Choice and Director of Infrastructure Development at Omnisky. Elon has an MBA from Tel Aviv University and a BSc in Computer Science from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Welcome all. Let's hear Elon's presentation. Thank you, Galen. Um, well, as Galen mentioned, uh, we uh, run um, the biggest provider of uh, open sim regions, um, commercially hosted. Um, and uh, some of you may have heard uh, of our uh, long-term vision about providing virtual worlds on demand, um, which will allow you to uh, basically use virtual worlds as a type of apps uh, where you have the vision of the environment that you want to be in, uh, you quickly find it, something like a YouTube uh, for virtual world, um, and you uh, create your own copy, get your friends inside there, and immediately share that uh, experience with other people. Uh, but that uh, is a, it's a completely different presentation. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Kitely Market, the Metaverse Marketplace, and uh, our experiences with it uh, one year later after we uh, launched it. Okay. Uh, first off, I'd like to define what I, I mean by when, when saying metaverse. Um, metaverse is a cyberspace in which uh, you can travel between virtual environments uh, using an avatar. Um, that means that uh, OpenSim uh, is part of the metaverse, Hypergrid is part of the metaverse, other technologies which are designed to allow you to move an avatar between various systems um, is, a meta is part of the metaverse. Uh, Second Life, in this example, is a very big service. It's, I think it's, uh, would say it's akin to uh, AOL um, before the internet uh, became popular. It's the biggest kid in the block. Uh, it certainly has uh, the most content, but eventually it will be replaced by a distributed amount, a distributed connection of, uh, of the services uh, using various uh, technologies that will create standards for interoperability. Um, okay, having defined that, let's begin. Okay, so everyone here knows about uh, the fact that virtual reality is coming uh, and it's kickstarting the metaverse. The interesting. Oculus Rift and other VR technologies is really driving back interest in virtual worlds and the use of virtual, um, virtual environments um, as more than just a curiosity. And what was uh, initially hailed as the next great thing in 2003, uh, then laughed at in 2008, now becoming popular again uh, as a concept and, and something that a lot of people are getting excited about. So uh, virtual, virtual worlds uh, platforms will compete for a uh, metaverse market share. Uh, there are a lot of uh, players trying to develop systems that will be part of the metaverse. Um, and at least initially, uh, they, they won't be compatible with each other. And this means uh, that there will be uh, a lot of technologies and a lot of systems and a lot of ways of doing things, different ways that uh, permissions or, or, or licenses work, different ways that avatars work. Um, and, and all of those things will make it very difficult for content creators to reach and support all of their potential customers. Um, and the, there's, there are sites such as uh, TurboSquid, which sell uh, 3D content. And those sites are, are really aimed more at the content creator, uh, where you can, you can read the license, you can define, you can get the, uh, the file that you want, the format that you want, you upload them into Blender, you work, you create a lot of things. Those things are great. 
uh, but they're not really suited for, for the end consumer who really just wants to be able to go to the marketplace, find the shoes that they want for the avatar, press a button and have that delivered to whatever virtual environment they're using. Uh, they don't want to mess with, with all the technical technicalities about how, how basically the, the, the sausage is made with the system they're interested in. Um, they just want a marketplace that's like in the real life. They go to Amazon to get the product they want. They want to have something similar to that um, in a marketplace. And that's where Kite Market uh, comes in. Kite Market will enable content creators to serve avatars from, across, uh, from all across the metaverse from a single online store. That's really our goal. Okay. Um, okay. Now let's begin by doing a quick overview of uh, the Kite Market's existing features. I'll, I'll interleave that with a bit of comments about things that we rolled out during this past year. And uh, then I'll get to some lessons learned um, from uh, running the marketplace for the metaverse for, for, for this uh, amount of period when the metaverse is really in its infancy. Okay, so first off, for, for a matter, uh, marketplace to be uh, compelling, to, to, it has to be attractive to consumers. Um, and you really want to have, if you look at uh, what Amazon and other big retailers have, online retailers, you have categories. You have various things such as attributes, for example, the color of, of the items, it's the material it's made of. And those are really things that uh, are, are category specific. You want to have text search. You want to be able to filter things out of uh, using uh, the combination of those things. You want to have stores inside the marketplace so uh, merchants will be able to uh, basically present their own uh, their own um, wares inside the, the, the greater marketplace you have having uh, their, their uh, cost, potential customers seeing other uh, merchants' items at the time. You want to have various ways to sort items. Um, you want to have the marketplace not be spammed by too many variations and demos of the same thing. Uh, so for example, if you have a, a bed that comes in 20 colors, and each one of them also has a variation. In some place like Second Life Marketplace, that would mean having 40 product listings for that bed. In Kitely, that would be a single product listing with multiple variations. So, and you can press a button, uh, you can see here, in, here next to the sort um, uh, field, where and it, which would group or ungroup those variations so you can see them separately or just see the most relevant variation uh, given the other uh, search attributes that you define. Okay. And uh, you don't just want to have search, you also want to have content discovery. So um, product variations and demos are located in the same listing. So here you see a listing. Uh, you see it has five different color variations for this hair. At the bottom, you see related items um, that are different hairs, styles of hairs by the same merchant. So, and you want to have uh, consumer reviews. Uh, inside the system and replies and so forth. And you want to have all of this combined in a way that really makes it easy uh, to navigate and to, um, to, to, to discover other content that you may have not have come searching for initially. Um, OK, you also see that the kite market is advanced. There's multiple ways, views, for example, the content, uh, the image viewer, uh, each image has, can have multiple uh, each variation star can have multiple images, and you have this unified image viewer where you can scroll between the various images that belong to all the variations. And if you like one of the variations you see, you can actually click from inside the image viewer to select that variation and switch to it. And, and so you can easily add it to your uh, shopping cart or to your wish list. Okay, the next step is what you want in the thing that gives entirety. Do you want personalized shopping? Uh, you want a personalized front page so it includes things such as uh, um, the featured uh, uh, products or stored, the kind of like advertisements that exist in the marketplace that are currently um, not so much personalized, but in the future it may be. Uh, you want to have uh, the, the categories that you show be the ones that are relevant to you, uh, and those are different for, for different people. You want to have a, a public and private wish list so you, know, you can, other people can see what you want. And obviously, you want to have certain things that you don't want to share that with the world. That, uh, and you want to uh, basically have a system that has built-in sales and promotions. Um, so you can see, for example, if so something is 50% uh, off until Tuesday, or be able to search things that are currently on sale and so forth. And that's potential IP is coming soon. 
Okay, kind of part, part of the importance of having a good marketplace is that the user experience has to be great. Uh, you want the things to flip and slide and twitch and, and do all kinds of special effects so it feels fun, almost like a mobile app like uh, Flow. And that is actually what we have in Titan Market inside a browser. So it has an intuitive layout. It's an animated, fast, and fun. You don't have to wait for things to load. You just press a button and things. If you click on something, it just the, the, the screen does an animation and flips to the other thing. Uh, images uh, preload and it does a lot of things in the back end, so you get a great user experience. And one of the very important things about uh, marketplace, it has to be merchant friendly. Otherwise, you won't get more content. So as before, we mentioned that you have um, uh, pro multiple product variations for the same product. So you don't list the 40 beds uh, separately. You list them in the same. Uh, currently, for example, we're watching this uh, as the listing for uh, product listing for the hair product that we saw before. Uh, you can see here, it's kind of maybe hard to read out, but you can see that um, you can define uh, different attributes, the shared, uh, the shared um, basically attributes like the product name and so forth are defined uh, in a single place. And then you have component parts that are defined separately for each variation. You can define attributes that are that applied to the entire product. For example, this is a long hair style. Uh, and you can have uh, very uh, attributes that are specific to a specific variation. So it might be auburn or black hair or so forth. Um, you have, um, you want to have the ability uh, to test an item. Uh, if you press a button, uh, in this, there's a test, uh, it's a test delivery, and that you want to see how the, the merchant, is, uh, how the buyer will get that. Many times, if you want to trust your own items, there's a problem, you won't detect all kinds of permission issues because you're the content creator. So you'll be able to do all kinds of things that your buyer won't be. So this test delivery actually creates a copy, sends you a copy where you're not the, the, the own, as a creator of that project, but Kite Market is the owner, where you can test it and see how your, your, uh, your customer is going to re, uh, be able to handle your product. And there's also the test demo delivery, obviously, for your demo items. And they each can be listed uh, separately and, and for each variation. And you see that the entire fit process for listing items is, is done from inside the marketplace. You don't have to go into inside the viewer and upload things into the marketplace or market them for the marketplace or do anything else. You just press a widget and it opens your and, and view to your inventory and you can select multiple folders or specific items and that way upload the, the content into Kotlin, into your listing. You, your listing can actually contain folders so things can be organized in a way that you want when you deliver to your uh, user. And part of what it does, Kaiti Market does in delivering to, uh, to, Kaiti, to Kaiti avatars, it direct delivers to Kaiti avatars inventory. So that includes the folder, for, uh, the folder um, structure. Now, when it delivers to um, a third party grid, we add a Kaiti Market automatically transforms those folders into boxes. There are only boxes, your items. And it automatically boxes the item inside the delivery box item. For, for example, you get a IT market order number one, two, three. Inside it, it has your various boxes for the items you bought when you delivered to an external grid. If you do this inside of uh, Kitely, it automatically appears in your inventory. Now, you want to be able to do operations not just on a particular product and its variation. You want to do operations on multiple products at once or different hairstyles. Now, in Kite Market, you have a very uh, powerful tool uh, for selecting and applying uh, uh, various changes to multiple products at once. And this is something new that we just rolled out a few days ago. And you can define groups of products. Let's say, for example, this product belongs to mesh share groups that I defined. And I added other, uh, the other, um, the other hair style that I wanted to this group, and now I can do I filter by this group and do operations on them. I can search, I can I do a lot of things on basically organize and handle my content in in, in very convenient ways, not just single item at a time, but as a product and its variation and the demo item and multiple products at once and so forth. You also want to have advanced post sales tools. You want to have detailed sales history, which Kitely has, and it has drilled down into everything, including to the level where you click a user's name and you can send them an IM from the website. Uh, you have uh, you want to have the notable sales reports, which you have. Uh, you want to have an uh, be able to easily refund specific items, not just the entire um, the entire order, and you can do that from Kitely Market from the, your purchases and sales history page. 
There's also a purchase history page for, for as a consumer when you buy items that's a separate issue. Um, you want to be able to deliver product updates from inside the, the, the marketplace, uh, the online marketplace. And you can do that here. When you do the re-deliver for an item that the person bought, it sends them the latest version of that item that is listed, variation of that item that is listed in the, in the marketplace. So if they bought the black hair variation of the, that particular hair, and you've got an updated version for that, and you do a re-deliver, they'll get that updated version. Uh, and this will happen to both people inside Kaipi and for people uh, from other grids. You want to have various email notifications. You want to have detailed history um, for order history and so forth. Uh, right now, as you see, the, the it's, this page is still missing the uh, advanced filtering and sorting that we had in the product management page, but that will arrive eventually as well to the post-sale tool. OK. And when you upload content to the Kaiki, you want to make sure that uh, the content is, um, it doesn't have problems. So uh, Kaiki Market automatically checks your, your content for various problems and gives you warnings such as a particular asset is missing, let's say for the asset for the textures for this, uh, for this uh, um, um, basically for uh, um, this fire pit. Um, and you have a de and deliver debug version, which delivers you, and you not only see inside the, you know, the browser the error, you can deliver a product where the missing, uh, the prints of the missing parts are highlighted in red, so you can read that and decide your, your, your own um, unmodified version of the item and find and quickly fix the problems that the private market detected. You want to have an integrated advertising system. Um, that allows you to uh, basically advertise in particular days. Uh, it's not just a week, uh, two weeks, or a month. It, uh, and it automatically finds you the next three slots because there's a certain amount of slots available for each uh, uh, ad location. Um, and automatically, you, you see the tools where, where it does an autocomplete for your product name. Uh, you can uh, advertise both products or and advertise your store, and then you can create a banner. Um, and you can manage uh, ads and basically track and see uh, their performance. So you see uh, the clicks, uh, how much you paid and the clicks and how much uh, sales it created, how much revenue you got. So you can really understand the value and see the return on investment uh, for your various ads and optimize them. And there are more features, but I won't go into that right now. There's advanced analytics. You can see on the right side, there's a lot of, and it's a, it's a really long page. It contains a lot of graphs and tables. It really allows you to really dig down and get the information that you want, and, and, and it's actionable. So you can see uh, which items perform best, what, how a price changes for particular dates uh, change your sales. You can see how, what's the ratio of uh, w which categories uh, sold best. You can, you can sort it and, and combine information day, weeks, and month. You can see which grids you're selling to most. And there's really a lot of information you can use this for, and it's all dr drilled down, and it's cross-linked with the other parts of the, of the application. And you can also look at and see how, where your customers came from. You can, uh, for example, uh, see here that um, most of the searches got to his item. Most of the purchases were made. Um, impressions were, were received for people actually already going to directly to the store. Some went to the marketplace. There were a few ads and related items uh, were just rolled out, so it's, it's still low. And you can dr drill down and see additional information. It's almost like a Google Analytics for your uh, marketplace um, store. Okay, and you want to have flexible sales option. You want to make sale in US dollars or Kaiki credits. The Kaiki credits are non-convertible virtual currency, so if you want to make earn real money, you have to sell in US dollars, and we eventually have to fold in period transfer that money to your PayPal account. Um, and you can see you can deliver to your Kite avatar. You can send gifts. You can send to, to other um, avatars and other grids. There are things with autocomplete here. There's uh, various things that make the process easy. I'm not going really going to go into too much detail if we don't have time. Uh, you can choose whether content can leave Kite or not. There's a Kite has a, uh, its own content protection system. Uh, which tracks um, content as, as it uh, travels inside Kitely, whether it's read, it's given to other people, uh, moved, renamed, and so forth. And if there's a problem, we can actually go in and then do things, and we know which uh, Kitely market um, transaction each item uh, arrived from, so we can act accordingly if there's, if there's problems. 
Uh, and it's the most important part. It allows you to sell to the metaverse. If you want, you can sell to OpenSIM, currently to all hypergrid enabled grid. And there are a few closed grids that enable, uh, make exceptions to enable hypergrid just so they can um, deliver um, uh, bought items from Kaiti Market, so they close it for other places, but are now uh, Kaiti Market deliveries. And we are already tested and will be uh, rolling out uh, support for delivery to high fidelity uh, once that system is mature enough, and there will be other systems as well. Okay, as you can see, the Kaiti Market has really uh, rapidly seen rapid improvement. You can see the amount, I'm not going to start reading this, but you can see the amount of, of, of updates we've had. Uh, to the system just this past year, um, and there's really a lot more coming. Um, it's important to note that this is done while we're still working on the uh, other aspects of our vision, the, the where, uh, virtual worlds on demand uh, technology. So you can see that um, we are advancing uh, quite rapidly in, in our development. Okay, so let's get to some of the lessons learned during Cartier Markets first year in business. Uh, first, I want to handle a few of the perceptions people had or, or concerns people had before we rolled out. And uh, I'll, I'll remind people to use some of those concerns. Uh, and then we'll see how what actually happened uh, during the past year. Okay, so first off, people said, what, sell to the metaverse, people will steal my content. And our answer at the time was people who are willing to steal your content are already doing so. Uh, consider iTunes, a good marketplace, and able to get money from people who can steal your content in other places. And that is really the basis of, 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 of the, the concept. We, we believe that if you give people uh, an, 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 an easy uh, way to acquire content that they can be sure is legal, and the, as the price is right, they'll buy it there rather than go into other websites and look for it uh, illegally. And, okay, so the next concern people had was, uh, well, I already sell in other marketplaces. If someone wants to, sell, uh, to buy what I sell, uh, they can get it there. Um, and our answer at the time was, uh, do those marketplaces deliver to the metaverse? Um, how much time and effort will you or your buyer need to invest to get the bought items properly delivered to the buyer's avatar? Uh, as you all know, there's issues when transferring content between grids and uh, um, if there, it's going to take a long time, the dollar or two dollars or whatever were equivalent in Linda dollars that they paid is not going to be worth it for the merchant. So they're not going to spend that time and, and you're not going to get access to that content. And that's a sales loss for the merchant because if they hadn't posted that in the country market because they could have sold it in the country market but wouldn't bother selling it in other marketplaces. So the, the best way um, is to make it easier for people to get your content legally than to steal it. Otherwise, you're just losing sales. So try to maximize your profit instead of minimizing uh, content theft. Okay, so that's all nice and clear, but what do our actual merchants think? And this is Oswell Wayfarer. He's one of our uh, top merchants. Um, he sells various mesh-based items, uh, mostly for landscaping. Okay, so this is a direct quote from him on our forums. Uh, he says, I think the hypergrid delivery aspect is what is driving much of the growth besides the fact that Kaiti market just works. My Kaiti earnings overshadowed my second life income for the first time in May 2014. So even though OpenSim hypergrid has orders of magnitude, less users, I mean, that is potential buyers than second life, uh, a good merchant can already make more in Kitely uh, market than he can in, um, or she can in, 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 in Second Life. And this, has, when you think about it, it there's, there's, there's some reason to it. There's, uh, obviously, there's a lot more demand in Second Life, but the amount of, uh, of uh, supply in OpenSim is so much less. So uh, each merchant in, in, in OpenSim is competing with a lot less um, other content creators than in Second Life, which gives an, uh, which give, really gives uh, people an opportunity uh, to get into a new um, a market that they would otherwise just miss out on. Okay, so let's look at some of the numbers to, to really understand what this all means. Um, first off, the important things to say that uh, people said, uh, okay, you, you'll start off and, and there'll be, you'll open it up and there's pent up demand so people will buy, but then they'll stop buying as, as, as you've exhausted there's so few people in OpenSim, so we will exhaust all your potential buyers and they'll finish buying after a few months and that will be it. 
So I spent, uh, what I listed here is what's, when Kite Market opened to, uh, to business, so the first time people can actually buy in Kite Market other than alpha testers. When Kite Market started living to the hypergrid, and the results from last month. Now, this is our just counts one month period from each of those dates. So first off, you see that the number of items sold is actually growing. And it, it surpassed those various peak uh, pent-up demand uh, points that you could have said, OK, well, a lot of people are going to buy here, but then they're going to stop. Well, they haven't stopped. It just keeps on growing. Obviously, it's, it's fluctuates from month to month, but, the general, um, but there's general uh, growth momentum. So people uh, buy items that have prices listed in U.S. dollars. Uh, initially said, well, if you don't have a convertible currency, people won't really want to buy. Uh, so the things to remember is Skype market acts as a middleman in all transactions. So we actually hide the identity of the buyer from the seller into the seller from the buyer. So all of them, all, both of them just know the Skype market PayPal account. Uh, neither one of them exchanges PayPal information, so the, you keep you're allowed to, you you you're able to to transact it an anonymously in Avatar uh, while actually doing real money transactions. And so, um, as people want to make real money, the number of items uh, listed has grown in, 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 in um, for US dollars has grown, and you see that the item, number of items bought for US dollars has grown as well. So uh, this is not a factor that is preventing people from from uh, growing on the uh, from buying items in the market. On the contrary, now uh, the buyers uh, spent an average of thirty three dollars and forty five cents in the market. This is not in the single transaction; this is total transactions revenue per unique uh, buyer. Uh, but this is not an uh, this is considerable amount considering that you know some users buy just something for a dollar and there are others that buy things for hundreds of dollars uh, this is not uh, inconsequential and you can see the average item sold for two dollars and eleven cents and again, this is again when people bought using Kaipi credit to use the undiscounted rate uh, to, to do this calculation uh, they actually spent more money uh, than that because some people um, uh, the fully discounted rate, sorry, uh, then because some people did not buy fully discounted. Items listed in Kaiti credits in Kaiti market, by the way, um, if the user doesn't have Kaiti credits, uh, they're automatically added, the appropriate anum, um, amount of Kaiti credits is adding to the shopping cart, so you don't have to go and buy them in bulk. If you do buy them in bulk, you might get a discount, but you can also just buy items listed in Kaiti credit directly using PayPal without having to buy a virtual currency first. Okay, so going to the next slide. Uh, and there's not just growth um, beyond uh, sort of, uh, all kinds of uh, expected points that people said, well, people are not going to buy from you afterwards. There's also growth beyond Kaiti, that is selling to the it's a metaverse. You can see that the Kaiti market delivered to over, uh, to, to, sorry, to 49 open sync grids. Uh, during the last year. And that is uh, quite a large number. These are um, considering there are only, only about 200 or so um, grids tracked by hypergrid business. That is quite a good coverage. Some of those grids were not listed by hypergrid business, some of those are private grids, um, but some of them are. Um, it's the fact that we reached them as well only just shows that uh, the reach here is good. People are becoming aware of the market. And uh, people are willing to pay more for exportable items. Um, you see that the number of uh, uh, people are that the people are not bothered by by having uh, people want to to export their items. Many of the items also have variations. Uh, variations can vary based on permission. So you can have, let's say, the same dress sold with Kaiti only or sold with the ability to export. And people often buy the export version and are willing to pay more for it. And you see that the percentage of items um, that items uh, uh, bought in, uh, in which uh, are, were sold uh, with the export permission has grown over time, and it's they're now at 66% of the items bought are bought with the export permission. Okay. Uh, next, uh, the, there's growth in number of items listed. We started off with about a thousand items. Uh, about 30% of them are, were uh, listed with that export permission, and we now have more than six times that number of items variations listed in Kaiti market. And you see the percent with uh, export permissions has also grown to about 45%. Okay, um, we're almost at the end. Uh, the metaverse is still is an infant, it's in it's still in its infancy, but Kaiti market is already performing like a free-to-play game store. Uh, why am I mentioning this? A lot of the um, people who are used to using the metaverse um, as, as a game, um, 
uh, do so uh, kind of in a freemium model. They expect things to be free, and they sometimes buy virtual items. So there's just 10,000 active Hypergrid users. This is according to a Hypergrid business. Some of them are the same people uh, with multiple accounts and multiple grids. There are other people who are not listing in any of those public grids. So I just rounded it up to about 10,000. The numbers may be a bit lower or higher. You can do the math accordingly. Uh, but that's about the ballpark, ballpark figure. And if you look at, uh, according to Gamma Sutra site, uh, about between 5 and 10 percent, that's a uh, free to play online game users buy virtual items. Why is this important? Because Kitey Market, despite the fact that there are other places to acquire content, has already sold to about 4.7 percent of Hypergrid users. And that's, that's market penetration equivalent to that of a marketplace selling to a closed on free to play online game. Uh, even with all the competition, even if we considering the fact that we still have not started an, uh, a proper advertising campaign. Um, and so it demonstrates two things. A, Kite Market has a good reach, um, and you can actually get to the consumer base that you want using Kite Market. And two, is that OpenSIM users behave like other users in, in, in on free to play online games. That is, they're willing to spend money, and they're, they're not, uh, they're not. There's not this communist, uh, everything needs to be free assumption. Some people might have it, but um, in general, the statistics show that they behave like any other MMO uh, um, players, um, especially free to play ones. Okay, so what's your takeaway from all this? A uh, kiting market is an advanced virtual good marketplace. Its goal is to enable content creators to, to list once and sell everywhere. It will support delivery to avatars on any accessible virtual environment in the metaverse. And despite the metaverse being in, really in its infancy, there is already money to be made in the market. OK, and now I'll go to your questions. Um, there's a question for me. If you have multiple avatars on different grids and with the same name, can you transfer Kite merchandise between your different avatars? OK, avatars and OpenSIM each have a unique UUID. And in order to prevent fraud, we actually remember the first time an avatar, uh, we, we see an avatar, let's say, with the name uh, uh, John Schmo. We remember that avatar has a particular UUID, and it came from, let's say, OS Grid. And if someone else tries to say, well, I'm John Schmo, uh, I have the same UUID, but comes from a different grid, then we know that person is uh, basically trying to cheat, and we, we won't transfer, allow transfer of content to that person. Um, now, you can have an avatar with different names. You can have John Schmo and, and OS Grid on Kaiki and other places, each with their own UUID. And you can buy content for those uh, avatars separately and deliver it using Kaiki Market. If you bought something that is not transferable, you won't be able to transfer it between those avatars. This is like exactly like buying a content for avatar in the same grid. If you bought something without copy, you won't be able to create copies. And so uh, it, it really behaves like they were avatars on the same grid. There's the concept of you buying something, uh, you buy it for a particular avatar in a particular grid. Um, there's, uh, according to the permissions, you bought the item with, that will define basically your license uh, to what you can do with that item uh, once it's delivered to your target grid. Uh, and the Kaiki Terms of Service has a proprietary rights section, which really defines how permissions translate into license. And that's the default that's used unless uh, a, a, a different license is provided by the Kaiki Market Merchant. OK. Um, and the question was about different grids. Uh, you can transfer Python Market between the different avatars and different grids. Uh, as I said, you have if you can, you can have an avatar with the same name on multiple grids. It, it, you, when you buy the content for that avatar, uh, you buy it for a UUID, then a specific avatar in a specific grid. Depending on the permission with which you bought the item, that will define whether or not you can transfer the item between those avatars. Uh, if you didn't buy it for you as a person, you bought it for uh, that particular avatar. Just like you would in Second Life, or, or uh, if you bought a particular item in Second Life Marketplace and you have an ad, you have a, 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 an alt, um, you don't get to copy it to that alt if it's a non-transfer or non-copy item. Uh, exactly the same as if it were one big grid. Uh, each, you know, you can have, you can copy, you can sell, you, 
using a single Kitely market account, uh, which is basically just signing up for in, in Kitely, you can deliver items to as many avatars as you want. When you you, you purchase, uh, you select when you in the shopping cart, you select which avatars the items will be delivered to, and that basically defines uh, you are the purchaser and the owner will be that avatar. So you can now buy it for for your Kite avatar, and next time you can buy it for your avatar on uh, Hyper on uh, OS Grid, and the next time you can buy it for someone else's avatar in Kite or on a different grid or, or whatever. So you get to choose each time. You don't have to create a particular uh, a Kite market account for each avatar you want to deliver to. You just need to create one. Additional questions. Any additional questions? Any plan to facilitate A-B testing for merchandise ad, ad images? Um, you can actually do this uh, right now. Uh, you can create two ads um, and uh, for, for similar Items, uh, let's say for and 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 see how the the ROI, how the basically the the conversion is for each one of the ads. And so if you have a a store ad, that can actually uh, something that can have a banner, and then you can direct that to a particular uh, um, well that group right now, but in fact direct it to a particular category in the future. You can you'll be able to direct it to a group, so you can have set different groups and uh, do A-B testing that way. Uh, OK. Um, any other questions? I'm scrolling here. Jillian, did you find any other questions that I uh, missed? Okay, there's uh, one more question in local chat. Ilan, can you see that? Um, it just see. came up just now. Uh, what, are the, what are some upcoming plans for the Kaiki market? Um, well, there are some of the things I, that I mentioned here about the sell and promotion system. There are uh, plans to improve various uh, uh, components uh, to make them more um, e usable, autocomplete, and so forth, and the various other um, options that I don't want to go into this time, kind of a few surprises. But uh, the good thing is that uh, it's, it's going to be rolled out quite quickly, as you've seen. Uh, it's, every few weeks, we'll roll out an additional uh, feature or, or, or actually a couple of features. And you'll be able to, to kind of uh, see it as it grows. Um, um, what's the question here? I see a question um, wondering for individual products, uh, will a given ad, one kind of ad might be more effective than another? Um, well, that, that's really something you can test. You can, uh, using the, the, the analytic system, you can see the effect that price has had on your conversion. And the conversion is not just sale, it's also people added, how many people added it to a shop, it's a wish, a wish list. And, um, and then you know, the impressions and the number of, uh, of um, people who checked out demos. So you can see various ways um, that, that people interacted and tracked those. So you can, using the analytic, that combination of the analytics tools and the tools provided with the advertising system, you can already get most of the information you want. Uh, some of the features would require you to use uh, additional things such as uh, grouping. Uh, and combine that with ads, which is a feature that's not uh, supported yet. Uh, but you can already do certain types of A-B testing. Uh, uh, particularly, you can do things that are not ad-related, pricing-related. You can check that you play with the, your prices of your, uh, of your um, items, and you can see uh, one of the drill downs in the Kitan Analytics, and you can see uh, the effect that uh, you, you can see the uh, breakdown per day um, of sales and so forth and impressions and see how, uh, how um, prices affected those things. 
Uh, and you can play with other various uh, elements of, of your product list and you can see how it's affected as well. So it's really about uh, making the best use of the, the tools that we provide. Um, oh, okay, we have about five minutes left. We probably have enough time for one more question. Does anyone have uh, another question for Elon? And of course, you can always um, ask questions even after the session is over. You can send him an IM, or you can send me an IM, and I can pass it on to him. Um, let me just go here. If you look at mm -hmm. my email is also listed here. That's ilan, I-L-A-N, at kaiki.com. If you have any question that you want to ask me directly, you can email me directly to this uh, email address, and that's the best way to get a hold of me even after this conference is over. Okay. Um, I do see one more question, Ilan, if we okay. have time, and I think we do. Um, mm -hmm. Have you thought about using the virtual market that Kitely is developing uh, for real-world goods? Uh, do we have enough time to answer that one? Yeah, well, the marketplace is, we're really building an advanced marketplace. Uh, and obviously, if you're building something like Amazon, it has applications that can be used for things like Amazon uses. That's really not our business model at the moment. Uh, but as I usually say, if there's a business opportunity and it's big enough, we might look into it. But again, it's not our focus at this time. Okay. Well, thank you, Ilan, for a terrific presentation. And thanks to the audience for listening. Uh, this concludes the first day of the second annual Open Simulator Community Conference in 2014. Although the conference programming has ended for the day, Little Field Grid is hosting a social event this evening at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at the Speak Easy Dance Club, and we encourage our attendees in world and on the web to visit Little Field for fun and post-conference discussions. You can hypergrid teleport to the event with your conference avatar, or for more information, see the conference program at conference.opensimulator.org. We'd like to thank our audience in world and on the web, our speaker, staff, and volunteers today for a terrific first day of the conference. We'll begin tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the keynote regions with an exciting keynote address from Stephen Laval from Oculus Rift. He will talk about the race to bring virtual reality to a mainstream audience. We hope to see you all there. Thank you and have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Gillian.